Why, hello there, TFO faithful. It is I, Raj Exotic, and we are here for a mid-season review. That's right, I've had enough owners whine and complain, and let's just face it, y'all trapped at home with the COVID, so you want something to watch, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes of review time because you see after week nine we have hit the mid-season the buys are done everybody's had eight games and actually every team if i remember correctly has played everybody in their division twice so half of these games were division games half of them or other types of games, but we got eight games, so now we can look at these teams and make a adjustment in our minds on who could be competing for the TFO Championship this year in the Eden Bowl. So let's go check out some of these rankings here. We're going to start with the Badass. And in the badass, you got that snap division with the big giant robots and Gibraltar's Overwatch tied at the top there, six and two, with Ultimate Spider-Man down at the bottom, three and five. Man, the Ultimate Spider-Man to me, they are a much better squad than this is letting on. But BGR and Overwatch, they have been quite dominant. So they are two of those teams that you're going to need to watch out for. So I could see both of them easily making it into the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if Ultimate Spider-Man come back in the end. You know Peter Parker likes to uh, have an underdog story. Over in the badass pop, you got DCU on top by one win. TMNT right behind them. And the poor GTA stars, one in seven. GTA is definitely a way better squad than this. They, they, they've just allowed too many points. I think the defense is what's really hurting the GTA. Uh, TMNT, a great squad, even at this point in the season. And DCU, to me, they have a pretty good defense. But their offense has suffered at times. So I think you're going to see DCU and Team NT fight it out. And if GTA can you know, steal a car and do the 360, the U-turn, and, and get back into position, you know, I, I always have time for guys with guns. And in the bad-ass crackle, you got the Do I Even Exist bros and the Do I Make You Horny 6-2 Right at the top, the do eyes. Do I like it? Do I love it? And then you got the Italian Stallions down there, one and seven. They have had a rocky season and not in a good way. Um, maybe they can make a comeback the second half of this season, or maybe this season, as I, I've been saying all year, maybe this season is just the first part of Rocky Three, and Rocky's just going to get his ass beat, and Mickey's going to die, and we just need to accept it. And then maybe next season the Italian Stallions can uh, make that second half of Rocky Three where he beats the crap out of Mr. T. So looking at your badass division, you would have right now the big giant robots, DCU, and Do I Exist Bro all going into the playoffs. And then it would be Do I Make You Horny and Gibraltar's Overwatch comprising the bad ass playoffs if they if they were to occur right now now on the bad guy and the bad guy you got the bad guy snap with the rookie dodge my balls six and two at the top there are the nxt takeover four and four and the conspiracy central must be a conspiracy two and six so uh, I think that this is a pretty good division. Uh, Conspiracy Central has definitely had offensive line issues. Dodge My Balls has looked really, really good. And NXT TakeOver, I mean, with the empty arena shows, maybe that's hurting them a little bit. So we'll see if they can go ahead and uh, pull a Champa versus Gargano in the second half of this season. And the bad guy, Pop. You got that legendary ZFG, the Zero Fs, given seven and one. Woo. And you got World's Warriors at five and three in the Saturday mornings. Man, they had a great season last year, but the change in color 
two and six. Maybe they want to change that color back. This World's Warriors and ZFG both being in the same division. Whoo wee! That's some competition. And in the bad guy crackle, Ray Jennings and them wannabe ballers, six and two with Valhalla's best, the heathens of Valhalla, two and six, and the Prophecy Destroyers, zero and eight. The Prophecy Destroyers have had a lot of issues offensively and defensively. I think Seth has learned a really important lesson about his team this year, and uh, hopefully he can pull in some good app next year and and oh man it's been bad for the destroyers they've had some close games too that's what's really bad is they've had a couple close games and they should have at least one victory on the books but they haven't they haven't been able to to score one the heathens of Valhalla that's one of my favorite teams and they are better than that record lets on and the wannabe ballers I love Ray Jennings but I think that record's a little better than how they've been performing so maybe in the second half of the season, Valhalla can make their comeback, but uh, four wins separate them, and there's only eight games to go. Which would mean if the playoffs were to happen right now, you'd have the Dodge My Balls, the ZFG, and the Wannabe Ballers all moving on to that playoffs with the wild card being World's Warriors and the NXT TakeOver. So now let's move over here. Well, actually, before we do that, what do we got coming up? Let's talk about the players for bad, I guess, here. The bad leading passer, you got Falco. I, I mean, I talked about Ray Jennings, but Shane Falco has been an amazing quarterback here. NXT's Adam Cole there, number two. Billy DeVore passing for the Do I Even Exist bros at number three. Crypto the Dog, DCU after Batman retired, number four. Number five is Austin Powers. Yeah, baby! And then Pat... Oh, Hulahan, number six, rolling in for the Dodge My Balls in that wheelchair. Receiver wise, oh, 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 Godzilla. Whoa. Number one there for the BGR. You got Nightwing for the DC Universe. Bob Bob, everybody's favorite Bob Bob from Overwatch. 1 1, that's 9 1 1. For the Conspiracy Central, Napoleon Bonaparte there for World's Warriors. And and Johnny Gargano can't main event an NXT pay-per-view right now, but he'll get up there in the receiving list. Yeah. Rusher-wise, Ron Jeremy the Big Dick himself, ZFG. And right behind him is Bellic of the GTA. That's where I'm saying GTA is better than they look. That Rusher, you got to worry about Bellic, the bum the bum always on his own team. Number three there, Patrick O'Houlihan. That's a quarterback, and you know it. Dodge my balls running all over you. Ray Jennings, my favorite wannabe baller at number five. And Ben Richards, do I exist, bros? Scoring-wise, Ron Jeremy, Bellick, Bum, Jennings, Richards. And then sliding in there is Alfred Pennyworth with a bunch of scores. Field goal-wise, them cancer windmills got double digits. While everybody else got single. Punting wise, who gives a crap about punting? But there they are. If you punt, well, you punt. Interception wise, Chavez there at number one. But you can see the fat bastard there with a touchdown interception return. Always beautiful. And then for the sack leaders, you got Bobby Boucher. Number 19, the water boy. 19 sacks on just half of this season. RN Jesus up there. Oh, Rhea Ripley. This is my brutality. I knew I'd think of it. And so you got other sackers up there, too. Do I exist, bro? Murder, suicide. They're one of my favorites. And then punt returner-wise there, you got your punt returners, but you got to see Casey Jones there got two punt return touchdowns on the season. And then kick return wise, you got Fonten and you got Armstrong both getting touchdown returns of their own. Faustin, I'm sorry, Faustin, I can't read. So now let's jump over to the Mad Dog and see what the Mads got cooking up. Mad Dog. We'll start with the Mad Dog snap here. You got 
The All-Star Defenders and the TFO Sponsors tied at the top 6-2. and two, And the returning champs, the Video Game Vixens, 3-5. and five. This, this is definitely a very hard division. All ex-champions and a current champ. So, you know, they've all been to the big dance, and they got to go through each other now to get to the next big dance. So that's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be an epic epic, right? <laughs> so, in the Mad Dog Pop... Well, actually, wait. we got to go Crackle. Where's Crackle? Why isn't this in order? Crackle Division! The Office at 6-2. and two, Yo Jo, 5-3. and three, And the Shinigami Reapers... Four and four. Another really hard division there. Them Reapers, they are good. I have seen them. So you may want to watch out. I also like Yojo. I like any team that's got an exclamation point in its name. And then the Mad Dog Pop Division. The Beer Gods drinking their way to a four and four. A one game lead on the Game of Life. And then the AEW Takeover. Or O oh and eight. I called it the Takeover. It's the AEW Dynamite. And they're really exploding all over themselves this season. So, yeah, baby. Yeah. So let's talk about the Mad Max Snap Division. As the Ultimate Fighters are 4-4. Four and four. Them Vampire Hunters, 3-5. and five. That's, the, that's the Ravioli team. That's the um, Chef Boy RD. He's my buddy. He's my Italian friend. I hope you're doing good, Chef Boy RD. Much love to you, man. And then the JoJo references three and five, so so both the Vance and JoJo tied, and they're just one game away from the MMA. That's a very very close division. Um, I think the Vamps are overhyped. I think MMA is overhyped, and I think JoJo is overhyped. So this is my overhyped division. Mad Max Crackle, Venture Industries four and four, Spank Bank one game back, three and five, and Emilio's Pizza a little bit burnt there, one. And seven. Um, I do think the venture industries in the bank are better than their uh, records do display there. Emilio's, I think they're going to get like two or three more wins at best. Um, but uh, Mikey's going to have to go back to the drawing board. They're good pizza, bad playing. And then you got the Mad Max Pop as you got the MJPB, baby. The Mike Judge plays base seven and one. With the Fantasy 7, 6, and 2. And if I remember correctly, MJPB's only loss is to the Fantasy 7s. And then you got the Bikini Bottom down there, 4 and 4. Bikini Bottom's record definitely not reflective of what kind of team they are. I think current champion John Belog said it best when he said, that's probably the best team in this division. I don't necessarily agree with that, but it's very, very close to what I would say. So let's talk about some of these players here. And I mean, the greatest player in MAD is Bill Lumberg. Ah, Lumberg, making me work on the weekends. You got Alan Rickman of the Spank Bank at number two. Michael Scott from The Office, number three. Vash Stampede for the All-Star Defenders, number four. Coochie Coo, Coochie Key at number five for the Reapers. And then Rogue Dead Guy, number six there for quarterbacks, passing-wise. Receiving-wise, David Bowie looking great, looking like he's having a Pro Bowl year here at number one. Beavis of the Mike Judge team, number two. Sid Highwin of the Fantasy Sevens. They love them long bombs, and he loves to jump up there and catch them. Scarlet for Yo Joe, number four. You got D, Leo D of the Emilio's Pizza, number five, and Butthead. MJPB. So MJPB taking two of those receiver slots. Russian wise, Lumberg, quarterback, number one, even over legendary La Fin du Monde, who came in number two. Sponsor bonus there from the Game of Life, number three. Bikini Bottoms got SpongeBob. He's a quarterback as well. Two huge running quarterbacks here, both in the same division. MJF of the AEW Dynamite. MJF, probably the best player they have. And then the roller of the JoJo references. All right, score-wise, we got Lumberg, we got Bowie, we got Demonde, Brock Sampson's on that list, along with the sponsor bonus and the Knives Chow. When we're talking field goals, none of them got double digits, but RIP Ed with nine there, best in this conference or league or whatever we're calling these nowadays. The punting, there's the punting. People got to punt. That's what happens. So look at them. Look at them. Those are punters. 
Interception wise, this is great. Look at these death at number one with seven, but look at Date Mike. Date Mike with three touchdown returns interceptions. That is a league record. And if he can keep it up, and look, Prison Mike down there with one of his own, the Mike and Mike combo. Sack leaders, Helsing of the Vamps, probably the only good thing Ravioli did. But you got Captain Hammer up there. You got Tom Anderson up there. You got a lot of people. Murder, there's suicide. Maybe that's murder, suicide. I don't know. Well, there's a murder, suicide somewhere, and it's in, it's one of these sackers. Or maybe murder, suicide's on two teams. Dun, dun. Punt returner wise, you got Mil Miltich, an MMA guy. I don't watch MMA, but he got a touchdown return, so you got to respect that. And when we got kick returns coming on, well, damn it, Karen, you're at number one. But if you look down there, BJ Penn, so MMA, man, they, they got some kick and punt return going on. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. All right, so that's your mid season review. So. Based on the teams currently, who would I have pinned as the final four teams? Well, I'm going to tell you that right now. If I had to pick my final four based on what I have seen currently, well, I would say the final four would exist of the do I even exist bros? It would also be the BGR, the big giant robots and then on the other side there for the final four this would be what for bad Fo final four for bad those are my two for badass and then for bad guy i'm gonna go with the zfg and you know what i'm gonna say the the dodge my balls i'll go with the dodge my balls so that's my final four for the bad final four for the mad what i'll say for the final four for the mad you know i'm gonna go with the um I'm going to go with the All-Star Defenders. Very solid squad there. And, and we'll go with The Office for the Mad Dog. And then for the Mad Max, uh, I got to go with the Mike Judge team, baby, man. Woo! They looking good. And I'm going to say that they're going to end up facing... Oh, man. Um, we'll go with the Fantasy Sevens. So there you go. There's my picks. You don't like it, pick them yourself. Yeah, none of you guys did a mid-season review, so stop, stop bitching. And we will see you this last half of this season. And thanks for everything, guys. Woo!